Francis Charles Phillips was a British writer. He was born in Brighton in 1849. The son of Reverend George Washington Phillips and Charlotte Elizabeth Phillips Annie Jones born Jessam. He attended Brighton College before joining the army, serving in the 2nd Queen's Royals and serving in Ireland and Aldershot for three years. After he left the army he became an actor, first at Liverpool and then at London. In 1884 he became a lawyer. He died in 1921. His novel, As in a Looking Glass, was amazingly popular and went through many editions. We will review his 1887 The Strange Adventures of Lucy Smith. The story is the narrative of Lucy Smith, starting out with her life at the girls' school of the sister Silverton, where she spent her life growing up. Knowing nothing about her past, one day she presses the two old ladies for information, and they tell Lucy how a strange man who did not look to be her father at all brought her to the house, with all her name tags carefully removed from all her clothing then shoved a ton of money into the Silverton's hands and ran off to catch the train. And even though this seems to set up a mystery as to Lucy's origin, the book never comes back to this. We have Lucy tell us how she knows she used to live in Croydon and try to find her old home without success, and the book stops caring about this by page 10. Lucy becomes a resident teacher at the school until Susanna and Dorcas Silverton want to sell and go into retirement. Lucy is advised to become a governess. And she does, but we skip her whole brief tenure for the Bulbrook family. But Mr. Bulbrook has an unexpected windfall and the entire family stays in Switzerland. So now Lucy has some money to burn and goes shopping, before she's accused of passing along fake notes. She faints in police custody and awakes in a very nice house in the care of an old woman she had seen just before the whole scandal broke out. Of course it was she who orchestrated the events to get Lucy here, so she can make Lucy sign a paper to sell her dreams. Lucy's amused at the weird fancy the old woman has until she makes Lucy sign the contract with her own blood. Then Lucy goes away with a lot of money but keeps having horrible nightmares, which the book does not go into much detail about, where she keeps seeing a horrible old man. This is the wizard who is stealing her dreams. We don't know why. We never even learn his name. Going to the shore, Lucy meets Arthur Edwards just returned from service in India. He takes a liking to her, so he lures her onto his yacht and kidnaps her to France in order to marry her. She agrees, but tells him of her trouble. And he just so happens to know an old scientific ponderer named Althaus who comes from Germany to help. Using a medium, they find out where the old wizard lives, effortlessly bully him into giving up the paper Lucy signed, and then leave, without him being able to do anything. Then the old woman finds Lucy at her hotel, and wants to force her to sign another, even worse contract, or to strangle her if she refuses or calls for help. This scene brings some life to the second volume, but Edwards and Althaus said I have to stop her and send her to court, where she suffocates herself with her own tongue. Then we have dozens of pages of waffle where the characters travel around and play billiards and talk about travelling around, and have Althaus espoused the virtue of such things as vivisection and trepanation. Then about ten pages before the end, the wizard steals Lucy's dreams again, so Althaus goes to murder him magically, leaving him a mangled bloody corpse. It is a sudden burst of interest after much meandering. One wonders why not just cut everything between the two visits, as the interval is nothing but filler.